next uh, presentation here, uh, we, uh, we thought that it would be great to engage yourselves into uh, looking from a game developer's perspective uh, and the game developer who's pushing the envelope here in Ontario looking at uh, developing content for uh, the, the mobile devices, the Nintendo 3DS, which are coming up. So I'm really pleased to uh, have uh, Mr. Demir Slogar, who's the CEO of Big Blue Bubble in London. Demir, please. design the games in the stereoscopic 3D, but uh, more how to uh, increase the user experience above what we used to see in today's uh, 3D games. So, get right to the point. Uh, next slide. Uh, so, what will be the goals of uh, 3D in gaming? Uh, first and most obvious uh, one is to increase player immersion in the game. So, we want to the user experience with playing the game, and that's obviously number one goal. Number two, uh, make game actions or features easier, easier for user. Uh, as an example, uh, if you're playing a baseball game and you're playing baseball game in stereoscopic 3D, it will be a little bit easier for user to figure out where the position of the ball exactly is uh, compared to the speed traveling towards you. So there's, there's some of these actions for user are going to be way easier if it has a way better perception of the depth. Uh, and finally, something we're hoping to see uh, a lot in the next couple of years, uh, uh, stereoscopic 3D should allow us to uh, come up with the new types of games uh, that we didn't see before. Uh, I think the last big genre that I would consider the new one maybe came out a year or two, two years ago. Uh, even though there's a lot of innovation in the, in the video gaming industry, there's always kind of, you can put these games in some specific genre or find something that's similar that the, the, the games is, that uh, they get released are based on. So hopefully with stereoscopic 3D, we will have something totally new. So uh, this is kind of my opinion of current uh, stereoscopic 3D market as far as video games go. First of all, stereoscopic 3D in games is still an afterthought. No one, as far as I know, is designing games specifically for 3D, at least when we're talking about the big commercial games. And it's kind of understandable. Uh, first of all, it, it does increase the cost of development to create the, 3D, the game. Even when you uh, have the, I would say, the typical game today, according to uh, Sony, uh, if you want to add stereoscopic 3D, the, any existing game, it will increase the uh, production budget by uh, on average 2%. That's probably true for the games that are out there, but it doesn't mean the result is what you should have as stereoscopic 3D. So uh, I believe this cost will be very higher. Uh, so if we exclude uh, augmented reality games, they're available today on both PS3 and uh, Nintendo 3DS. They're uh, right now only uh, viable platforms except for we see that the, uh, the, that support uh, stereoscopic 3D gaming. There's really no games out there. Uh, I think Andrew mentioned in the uh, previous speech there's I think 40 something games out there. Each one of these games could be easily done without stereoscopic 3D and the game will still work without losing any, uh, any major uh, gameplay element. And finally, I don't expect there will be short-term changes in, in this area. Uh, in uh, increasing the, there will be more and more uh, stereoscopic 3D games, but there won't be exclusive stereoscopic 3D. Good example is Nintendo 3DS, for example, have a slider where you can not only regulate but turn off 3D effects. So if your game really required 3D, what's the point of having something like this? Even Nintendo, their developer guidelines suggest for every game that should be actually playable without 3D effect kind of makes it, well, strange, nothing else. Uh, the low adaption of uh, stereoscopic 3D, it's just kind of relative, that's my view with it. I, I see the adaption rate still being fairly low, hopefully that's going to change, and hopefully that's going to change with uh, uh, getting better technology. Uh, 
one panel discussion yesterday was very interesting on, on this subject. Obviously, still glasses are one of the major problems why uh, stereoscopic 3D is not widely uh, accepted, at least in homes. And uh, last uh, factor are technical issues. There are a lot of technical issues in uh, the stereoscopic 3D games. So I will dive a little bit deeper in this, not much, okay? not too much, but just to give you some idea of what technical difficulties uh, game developers have when they're uh, trying to develop the game. So main one is you have less CPU and GPU time because each scene uh, takes on average twice as much time uh, uh, to render, and tw uh, twice as much uh, graphic processor power, about maybe 20% more CPU power. So basically you have to render uh, uh, scene twice for both left and right eye. Some of the things you can use some tricks how to reduce the num uh, amount of work done. For example, the objects that are very far away in a scene, you don't really have to render them twice because the distance between them uh, will be so small so it's not going to be noticeable. So there's a couple of things you can save. Unfortunately, there's a whole new set of problems that, uh, that pop start popping up in modern games today. and. Uh, here are the, some of them. So, a lot of tricks I would say that we use today in the game development just not going to work in stereoscopic 3D anymore. First one is billboards. Uh, what are billboards? It's not just billboards, uh, it's all the objects uh, that are in a scene in a the game, they're far away from you and you will never have a chance to go behind them or see them from the side. They can be easily che uh, cheated and just made out of uh, one plane rather than designing a whole 3D object. So uh, it's very uh, common to do it, especially with a distant object like mountains, trees that are in the distance. Everything basically that's in the distance, it will always have to reduce number of polygons, knowing that the player is not going to be able to basically see the distinction between the fully uh, rendered 3D object and some billboard. Uh, when you have this, uh, when you add stereoscopic 3D effect to the game, this becomes more and more obvious and obviously uh, we can't afford to have this kind of object because it kind of uh, damage the overall experience. Uh, next thing, so that, that automatically increases on the top of the fact that you have to render scene twice, it automatically increases the amount of time you have to spend, artists have to uh, get more, uh, much more work to actually create all these objects uh, with more polish and of course you need more uh, CPU power in the first place to render more polys. Second things are special effects that we used to see on games today, like explosion, smoke, yeah, even fog effect. That it's uh, very cheap to do. Cheap, I mean, in the uh, sense of processor power, because graphic cards uh, will have this effect on it. All these things either not going to work in the stereoscopic 3D, or they have to be totally redone. The special effects that cannot be, you can't have smoke that's uh, uh, just one plane facing towards the player, and you will never see the the smoke doesn't have volume, now smoke really has to have volume, so you have to create either particles or, or metric effect in order, or in order to get this. Again, uh, big issue and very hard to do. Uh, next thing uh, is depth of field. A really, really cool effect. Start, they started using this extensively in uh, games in the last maybe two to three years. Like almost every game today that has uh, any kind of uh, animations in the sequence that's done in a uh, that's not pre-rendered, but it's done in the in-game rendering. That will have depth of field effect. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's the, uh, when you see the object in the background, there will be a little bit blurry. Objects in the front could be blurry as well, but just to, something that you want the camera to, to focus on, where the action is, it's going to be sharp. So it gives you uh, the kind of points player where he has to uh, uh, put his attention when the scene's happening. This unfortunately doesn't work well in a, uh, in a stereoscopic 3D. It actually kind of kills the 3D effect. Uh, one of the reasons is when you see stereoscopic 3D, so you know where the depth of all the objects is, and it's up to you as a player to decide where you want to focus uh, your attention. So if everything has about the same uh, sharpness, uh, I would say it's up to the user to uh, decide where to focus your uh, attention. If you already have some objects blurred out, it just feels weird, it doesn't, but it's not a good 3D. Uh, last thing I put on the list, this list could be fairly huge, I just uh, listed some of the more obvious uh, uh, issues we have. 
So a live subject from Ulysses Crosshair cursor that's seen in almost every shooting game today. So that's not going to work as well because where are you really going to put it? Are you going to put it on the top of the screen? Or uh, one of the things that's done in some of the games, they have kind of simulation of uh, laser sight on your weapon. Uh, you can actually snap this crosshair cursor on the object that you're currently look on, uh, looking at. But uh, in stereoscopic 3D, it's, it doesn't, this actually thing will work. But other than that, uh, even that will feel weird because as you uh, move position of your cursor, it's going to uh, snap to the different objects. It can, can look uh, pretty weird. So, this is just some of the technical issues uh, that we have today. So, uh, how are we going to resolve all this? Basically, by smart design of the, the video games, take a totally different approach. So, uh, the way I see this, the, uh, in order to approach design of the video games for stereoscopic 3D, you, you can have three different levels uh, or design methods, whatever you want to call them. So, uh, first of all, will be example of the game we have in production. It's for uh, uh, mobile platforms, and that's the most simplest one. Uh, Basically, the only goal of stereoscopic 3D here is increasing visual experience uh, uh, for the user. Uh, and that, I would say, that's probably 80 to 90 percent of the games today on the market. That's going to be as far as they go as far as the, in terms of 3D. Our game that's currently in pre-production, it's called uh, Tapis, and it's uh, in pre-production for uh, PS3, uh, stereoscopic 3D. And that will be an example where the actual uh, stereoscopic 3D will increase uh, uh, improved quality of uh, action in a game. It's a rhythm-based game when you have to uh, imagine it as like, I would say, fancy version of Guitar Hero. Uh, the whole idea, uh, idea is uh, by beating the drums player creates the uh, soundtrack, but it actually does create based on funny monsters that are jumping around that you have to match uh, hitting the drum in a moment when they hit the drum. So if you can see them in stereoscopic 3D, you can see the depth, you will uh, have way better perception how long it's going to take them to get back to, uh, to the drum, when they're going to hit, and how you're going to uh, match the action. So uh, I think it's going to be very clear when you see the video, so if you can start this. As you can see, just having this uh, depth helps a lot, knowing when exactly your monster is going to uh, hit the, the drum. The game will work with a moving camera that's going around constantly, so it's going to be even more important to have this in a game. That, this is things that we render just to show you approximately how the game works. Okay? So, uh, that's the example that uh, more and more games have in it actually there will have some uh, some feature that that will help the game uh, another example uh, I'll put here uh, there's a lot of first-person shooting uh, shooting games out there uh, they will have a uh, that you can say okay depth of, uh, of uh, knowing how far my target is when I'm shooting the uh, weapon or gun or something doesn't really help you that much because in a moment when you align the cursor with something and you know speed of the bullet is uh, really fast, so it doesn't, really, it doesn't really help you knowing how far something is. If you're gonna, uh, uh, if your bullet's gonna reach your target in one millisecond or 1.5 millisecond, it doesn't really matter. But when you have game when you, for example, shoot uh, uh, catapult or angry bird or something, when you have this uh, 
the arch and pad or something, then you can really see, uh, especially following the shadow of the projector or something, it does help a lot to increase this user experience. It actually makes sense to make this kind of games in 3D. And finally, our uh, last example, Bundero 3D that's in production for Nintendo 3DS. Uh, this is an example as far as uh, I can see how the game hopefully is going to uh, look, well, not maybe look, but work one day uh, in the future, but hopefully also not that far away from today, so when, uh, when developers will actually focus on a 3D game. This is an example of the game, so far only one I know that's not really, uh, it's not going to work without uh, 3D at all unless you totally re redesign the game, but making this game playing on a flat uh, 2D screen, it's going to be very, very tough, if not impossible. So, I'm not sure if video is going to uh, show, uh, be uh, very uh, easy to understand what the gameplay is, I will try to explain it in advance. So the goal of the game, you have the, uh, some structure in a space made out of rope, so you start fires on that one uh, side of the rope and you have to keep this fire going. In order to keep the fire going, fire always uh, burns upwards. So you have to turn and uh, twist and turn the rope in order to make sure that there's always enough rope to fire to uh, continue burning, otherwise it, it will turn off. Uh, so it might sound a little bit weird to uh, explain it, so ho hopefully uh, you will understand it from the video. So, like the uh, next video. So on the bottom of uh, 3DS screen, player will now uh, use the pen or a finger to twist this rope in order to keep the fire going. If you stop, the fire will just reach the top and then it will die. We'll have a different shape later on that will make it, make it more obvious. So I'm going to turn this because the goal is to burn the old rope. It's burning up now. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but some of the fires actually did die just because they didn't have... Like everyone that will go the direction down, left the right, will die and all the other ones will survive. So that's it. That, that will be, I think, the best example of the game that can really only work in stereoscopic 3D and I'm hoping to see more of these things in the future. So. Uh, ready for questions. So uh, some of the things to identify as difficulties like explosions and fires. Uh, in the example you just gave, you have burning fire that seems to be done with a 2D sprite in a bird fire. Uh, it, it is in this example because this is rendered in 3D Max, it's not actually game footage. Uh, and also the fire is, is uh, very small. So uh, it looks decent because there's a lot of fire in the, in your, uh, action that's happening at this moment is focused all over the place. It's not just one small fire. If it's one and if you're focusing on this, you will notice more and more these uh, artifacts. But yeah, you're right. It, it could work, just the effect is not going to be the same. Okay. Uh, another unrelated question. In terms of input, do you find the choice in stereoscopic 3D influences your input paradigm? Uh, no, not that much because uh, uh, Obviously, uh, uh, I mentioned at, at one point that in the reality games, they're working well with 3D because you, uh, you're controlling everything with the cameras. Uh, but uh, 3D, if you don't have stereoscopic 3D, the games will still be done in 3D, so you do have the, uh, this perception of depth and everything. It's not as good as with stereoscopic 3D, obviously, but people are used to move uh, uh, their characters with the mouse, uh, joypad, whatever, in the, the three dimension. Thanks. Hi. Uh, you mentioned 3DS. I'm wondering what other platforms you're targeting for mobile still 3D game development. Uh, right now, we're targeting mainly non-existing platforms. So, uh, we're making uh, more generic games that we uh, hope to be able to render on any platform. So, we're doing 3DS, PS3, uh, and all the cell phones with the 3D screens. 3D screens they're coming out. Uh, I think quite a few of them will actually come out this year. Okay. Thanks. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.